put let's, that fucking let's beat start down. the last episode of the year off by getting dick down they came up with a good <laughs> bill one i was proud to support this annual legislation has been signed into law for six consecutive decades when the senate fails to do anything they always do the national defense authorization bill it shows that congress can come together at least on this wonder why yeah i wonder why that is supporting our men and women in uniform and keeping our country safe this year the bill authorizes 740.5 billion dollars in defense spending it provides another three percent well-deserved pay raise for our troops it also recognizes that many in the armed forces are on the front lines here at home as well helping fight the ongoing COVID-19 epidemic, providing our troops with necessary benefits and protections, including a 10% increase in hazardous duty pay. The bill also includes a number of provisions that I authored and supported, including language expressing strong support for the Baltic states and Ukraine, especially in the face of continued unforgivable <laughs> Russian aggression. Another part of the anti-racism project. It requires project. the renaming of <laughs> military bases in the United States, which were once named in honor of Confederate generals, those who served in the Confederacy in an attempt to secede from the Union and to defend the institution of slavery, have been enshrined in the names of these bases for many, many years. This effort to rename them is long, long overdue. It tries to correct and recognize the mistakes of our past and really address the sensitive racial inequities at the Pentagon when it comes to this decision making. OK, there you go. Uh, so at, at that point, the uh, the talent agent turns to the senator and says, uh, what do you call your act? And he says, the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Dick Durbin, he is one of Illinois senators. He was first elected to Congress in 1983. And wouldn't you know it, this is the first bill he's ever, this is the first time he's ever made an issue as far as legislation about renaming Confederate bases. So this has been a lifelong passion for him. Uh, this is not just like, uh, oh, I've, uh, I decided this is the year that I won't be racist anymore. But in furthering his commitment to anti-racism, uh, Durbin wants uh, the Senate to come together, forget about the $2,000 checks, to give more money to Azov Battalion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, no more, uh, no more Confederate names on our bases. But yes, to uh, members of the Durlwanger Brigade on the names of the Ukrainian militias we fought. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So that was that was Dick Durbin explaining um, why he will be rejecting uh, Bernie, fellow Senator Bernie Sanders' efforts to hold up the vote on the National Defense Authorization Act until they get fucking pay, give us our money, give us our two thousand dollars, which apparently. Now Donald Trump is is saying that uh, yeah that's that's what we should get and he's demanding that everyone get two thousand dollars and what I think is funny about this is that so for for it, 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 while they were negotiating this for fucking months with McConnell and the Republicans like they they were they winnowed it down to six hundred dollars then it gets to Trump's desk and all of a sudden he says no uh, two thousand dollars I'm sending it back. So he called their bluff, and now the Democrats are calling his bluff, apparently, by saying, okay, we'll, we'll go for the $2,000. But strangely, as soon as that becomes like a reality, like a thing that could actually happen, that like, hey, guess what? Both sides seem to agree on this. Like, okay, what's, what's holding it up? As soon as that becomes the case, economists, politicians, and pundits on both the Democratic and Republican side, all of a sudden just become very concerned about the idea that we could be spending money uh giving money to people who don't actually need it as they they just as soon as that becomes a reality they're like oh the one thing the u.s government absolutely must not and cannot do is accidentally give money to people who are already wealthy no you give the you give wealthy people money on purpose that that's what the government's there for giving it to them accidentally is moral hazard and yeah horror. well i mean like larry larry summers god god bless him gave the game away because this thing was like, all right, well, if it's 2000, like, why not, why not 10,000? Why not 20,000? Which <laughs> is like on its face, idiotic, but it speaks to a larger reason, you know, why Democrats would be against this. It's because if the government could do this, if the government could give you $2,000 when you desperately, desperately need it. When, uh, unemployment, state unemployment systems are so beleaguered that people aren't getting their payouts, which is, you know, a great reason in and of itself for this. Um, 
then people start wondering, all right, well, what aren't they doing? What other stuff are they not doing? What other problems are they not fixing? It's one thing to not do anything and then people expect nothing, but to do something and go back to doing nothing, that raises a lot of problems for Democrats. And uh, could someone also, could someone explain to me what Section 230 is? I keep reading about it. What, what, what does that Section refer to? Section 230 means that uh, social media companies would be liable for things people say on uh, on their platforms, which, funnily enough, this was a, uh, this is a throwback. Everything, we're just living in recyclables uh, during Gamergate. This was like a thing woke people would say sometimes. They're like, we need to take away the liability shields of corporations. So, like, they'll take, they'll ban people more, I guess. But now yeah. it's a conservative issue. Well, so. that's the thing is that because they all think a big shadow banned or something when the only reason that, you know, that they're left on there is because the the platforms don't have to worry about getting sued. I mean, like you could, if I could, if I was bet Midler, I'd sue Twitter for letting them have the president call me a washed up psycho, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he, cause he has a dog brain and his supporters have dog brains. They don't know that Tuxton 230 is like why they're allowed on the internet. And so apparently McConnell is trying to put that is a poison pill in there to prevent Democrats from voting for it. To which I say, who gives a shit? Just go for it. It's so like that sort of liability is so deeply entrenched into like the existing model of the Internet. And in fact, is enshrined in like the revised NAFTA that they fucking that he fucking was supposedly negotiated earlier in this presidency that it's not going anywhere. You can find the sign the bill. And if it did good, get rid of the Internet. It's terrible. It's so awful. <laughs> Free us from this fucking prison. And then we could dry our tears with our two thousand dollars. Well, I mean, um, I, wrote, I wrote about this in, in a Catalyst article about, like, online activism, and it's like the Internet actually is really, really, really unique in that if, I mean, in terms of media, like, all the law around it is apparently based on, like, radio law. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and so at, at all the sort of, like, liberal attempts to regulate the Internet do treat it as a war of poster on poster rather than poster against tech company. So it's like this weird thing where it's like, okay, there's clearly like, you know, people dox people, do all kinds of violative things to it. But the only recourse you possibly have is to like track down whatever 15 year old is being a shit online rather than, I mean, like I'm all for like shifting, uh, shifting it towards the, the fucking companies, but that's just never going to happen. Well, they like, would just stop. They would just shut yeah. because they couldn't, they can't because everyone's on there libeling each other all day long. You can't yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it's just, if, if I could take, you know, a principled stand on this issue, I mean like the, the one thing I am truly against, and I think all people should join me in this is uh, private individuals bringing civil action uh, because another private individual supposedly <laughs> libeled them in a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, in theory, it's like, yeah, I would much rather if if someone says something shitty about you in a newspaper, like I would much rather the editors or a lie about a, a newspaper, I'd much rather the, the editors like, uh, you know, or that actual institution get uh, sued rather than the person who said it who's just like a private citizen. But it's like the behemoth that is like Internet tech companies, like there's nothing like, no, that's like a non-starter at this point. There's no, we, we don't even, they don't even pay taxes. They're not going to be subject to fucking civil suits. Well, I mean, and the only reason that this is being uh, bandied about is because, you know, like Mitch McConnell is going to find a way to just be like, oh, like the only way we're going to vote on the $2,000 is that up until like five minutes ago, we had all agreed that the, we didn't want and wasn't necessary. But now that the president says so, we have to pretend that that's a thing that can happen now is by loading it up with all these different, like uh, all, all these little items that he knows that Democrats can't vote for. Yeah. And it'll like be, I said, it's just, it just, yeah, but like, like I said, it's just back to the, like the Durbin clip. It's just like, it's just all this kayfabe where it just seems to be like, like all the time they just lament, like, you know, why can't both of the parties come together and help the people when they need it? And then like right here in front of us, we have a situation where like on the surface, everyone is saying, that they all want the two thousand dollars now. Do you think it's going to happen? Mm -hmm. No. This, nope. is also, this is also why, like, forcing a vote on Medicare for all would be just a huge waste of time and energy at this point. Like, well, they just they get the, the there are so many places that you can displace responsibility. Like, 
uh, everybody can say they're for it, including Biden and Trump. Uh, but Mitch McConnell says no. And, and there's no he he doesn't answer to anybody. And everybody gets to say I've been for it, except for McConnell. But the reason that they could say they're for it is because McConnell is there making sure it won't happen. Exactly. exactly. And like as far as as far as McConnell goes, I mean, like, obviously, like he his name is now synonymous with why uh, nothing can get done or why we can't have anything good. But go back to that clip I played at the beginning of the fucking episode. That's Dick Durbin. Mm-hmm. That's Dick Durbin stopping this from happening. And it's just like, uh, like, oh, but, 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 but McConnell, it's, it's McConnell who's stopping this. Like, well, it's him. It's, it's his fault. And it's just like, no, I mean, they're all on the same side. They're all on the same side. It's like Paul Krugman, Tom Friedman. Like, they've all come out in, like, just this past week to just be like, mm, well, I know, I know the politics of this makes sense, but economically, giving people who don't need the mon- all this money, uh, you know, checks during this time, when we should, we should really be helping only the poorest, most destitute, most, you know, needy people at this time now. And then I'm not sure how comfortable I am with just giving everyone $2,000 checks. It's like, motherfucker, you're still cashing your Social Security check. And if you're Tom Friedman, you're still fucking living off your billionaire wife's fucking family's money. So just shut the fuck up. And this is also why, like, like Obama was so devastating to their credibility because they need Republicans as like plausible deniability about their ability to be able to do anything to accomplish the things they ostensibly stand for. So you had eight years of like a Democratic president. They had like a supermajority for a few of them. Nothing got done, and they're like, "Oh shit, uh, we had that was that was really bad." Like people are. People's lives got worse under our watch. I mean, like, this is the stuff that gets you into conspiratorial thinking. Like, they, it, it's better for them to be, um, like, insti- the institutional underdogs because then they don't have to do anything. And I think at this point it's just their policy. And it's the, just their plan is to just be like, just be, just, just succeed enough so that you can point to the Republicans and say that they're the reason that we can't get anything done. And, you know, yeah, like it's, uh, you know, like as we said, both Biden and Trump now have said that yes to the $2,000 checks. But like that's everybody knows it's not going to happen no matter who's fucking president Um, because they don't want it. They don't they're against that. They're they're opposed to that uh, for ideological reasons. And, you know, I mean, like and also and like and again, it's this idea that like, oh, if we could just if we could just prove that they're lying about this, that like that would make some sort of difference. And that sort of gets back to my point about the Medicare for all vote where it's just like. I'm I'm agnostic on it. Like if they want it, if 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 they force it to happen, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna gainsay anyone who who works for that. It's just like I don't think that proving the hypocrisy of Democratic elected representatives is the silver bullet that or like the organizing principle that people think seem to think it, it could be. It might be, but like I I just think like it just it, it, my my original point about that whole thing was that like we know what Democratic voters think about this, and the answer is they don't care that the people they vote for don't actually support the things that they say yeah they do. i mean yeah i mean like kamala harris said that joe biden was a racist rapist at the debates <laughs> and now look at her it, yeah. it doesn't matter like you can't trap these people into anything because their voters are just gonna vote for them no matter what yeah you just have to get rid of them one way or the other they just That's like really they literally don't i mean it, it, and there have been like moments like public moments where you know citizens or town halls or whatever have approached Democrats and they think they have like a gotcha moment with it's like you supported this and now you support that and they're like what are you going to do about it like literally the response is is, is the, it, it's never devastating and I and I do think that there's sort of a risk involved in going for that kind of politics and pursuing it because one we do actually have limited energy people have limited attention spans uh, using all of their energy, all of our energy and attention spans on these symbolic things, like I think it's it's it would, could be the worst thing in the world to just watch a a political a bit of political theater that is not going to get us anything because it's as touching as the end of the Jamaican bobsled team or something. <laughs> like that stuff seems like very like yeah, but but we kept going and it's like yeah. well, but to normal people who really need political solutions. That's not like heartwarming or beautiful or whatever. It's just like, fuck. Now we have to yeah, carry yeah, the yeah, bobsled? But, yeah, it's a common refrain. It's a common refrain with uh, people who worked in both the 2016 and 2020 Bernie campaign. This sort of like um, 
Well, look look all the forces arrayed against us. And look how far we got. Pretty amazing, huh? I have a feeling this would be another thing. Look at all the people who are against Medicare for All, and we got, you know, 20 votes. And okay, yeah. who, give, who fucking gives this shit? Well, I mean, they may get more than 20 votes because I think, that, I mean, like, a, another pitfall to this, in my opinion, is that it would give a hell of a lot of Democrats a lot of, it would cover to vote yes for it, knowing full well that it'll never pass. I mean, the Democrats do this all the time. Yes, yes. And, you know, like, and when I say this, like, I'm not... You know, last time I, I, I waded into this uh, debate, and I suppose we ended up there again, I'm not, like, the people who, who want this floor vote to happen or want to force this out, ha- floor vote, like, I don't think that they're dupes or stupid or, like, you know, uh, uh, chills for the Democratic no, Party No, I, I, I disagree. Like that. I disagree with them on strategy. Yeah, I disagree like it's with just, them on the I, way the, the party functions. It's not it's yeah. not like a oh you're exactly. stupid. You're the, like it's just like right, no, right, I, right. I don't think that would work. I respect uh, I respect the idea behind it, but if anything, I would say that you are not cynical enough about yeah, I, how these people function. Yeah, I mean that, that, I, that, 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 that's why I, I've laid out my like you know mild skepticism to the point of being agnostic on this. Is that I am far, I'm just I feel like I'm a lot more pessimistic about you know, the 2020 primary and what, you know, I learned from that or what we were shown about what the Democratic Party is and more crucially, who the people who vote for the Democratic Party are and how they think and behave. Yeah, I do have to say I am sympathetic to the uh, to one of the central ideas behind this, which is, you know, how are how are you going, you know, whether you're AOC or Ilhan Omar or Rashida Tlaib, like, all these people who are, you know, far better than uh, people you can compare them to on the Democratic side of things. How can you say everything you say and like just no problem reelect Pelosi as re- leader? I'm very sympathetic to that point. Yeah. And I think that's something that people purposely glossed over and purposely ignored. And it's like, you know, I mean, yeah, I guess there, there really is no one waiting in the wings, but it's something I would have liked to have seen. A serious challenge to Pelosi's leadership. I mean, after this perform after this performance in the House, if you're if that's still your thing that you want to be a House Democrat, don't you kind of don't you go? Well, we almost fucking we almost blew this one. We almost blew. We mm-hmm. almost lost our majority in the House. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's time for someone else. Mm-hmm. I think like the position that they're in, um, and I'm, I'm. This is not a moral. I don't think it makes them good people or bad people or smart or dumb or anything. It's that they're like, well, look, how am I going to stay in power? How am I going to get reelected? How am I not going to be facing internal opposition from my own party to the point where it would prevent me from getting elected again? Which we all know the Democrat, the Democratic Party will totally eat its own left wing. And... I think their thinking is like, well, if I do this, then I might not get elected next year. And how will I, how will we get anything done if I don't get elected this year or next election? And it's like, that's obviously like a trap because you spend the rest of your life uh, or the rest of your career anyway, trying to be just cautious enough to uh, stay, you know, in, in the sort of, uh, in the Democratic Party clubhouse. And then thinking, well, one of these days we're going to reach, I don't know, maximum capacity or I'm going to be able to be like this dynamo or this fucking maverick and and do this stuff. And it's like, no, you don't understand the reason you're allowed to stay. The reason they tolerate you is because they know you never will rock the boat. It's just it's I don't know. It's honestly a trap. And it's like why I would never run for office, because the things that I would have to do to get there would preclude me doing the things that I would want to do if I were in office. It's the most catch 22 thing. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it just, for me, like it comes down to uh, the fact that as soon as it was a two person race in the democratic primary between the one guy who honestly and consistently and passionately had advocated for Medicare for all his entire career. And one guy who among the people running for uh, the president on the Democratic side was the only one who was honest enough to say, I don't support Medicare for all at all. And I've been against it my entire career and will continue to do so. As soon as it came down to that choice, it wasn't close. It wasn't close. And the, and the voters went for the guy who clearly said that he didn't support Medicare for all. And I, I, you know, I don't know what you do about that. But like, that's, I, I think, what we're left with. 